is a silent killer that has continued to put untold hardship on patients, their relations and their society, like other cancers. The disease manifests significantly in women, mostly resulting from genetic predisposition, environmental factors, lifestyle and age. Now, one of the most common types of cancer worldwide, especially among women, is breast cancer, the fifth leading cause of cancer death worldwide. In Nigeria, there is a growing concern as the incidence of cancer has risen dramatically over the last 10 years. According to the National Cancer Control Plan 2018 to 2022, cancer is responsible for 76,000 deaths every year with breast cancer accounting for close to 23% of all cancer cases. Now, this calls for collective action by both government and relevant stakeholders to address and help in reducing the burden of breast cancer in Nigeria through prevention, early detection and treatment. October is Breast Cancer Month, and tonight, Weekend File will take a look at increasing awareness, access to screening and treatment. My guest is Dr. Fatima Ino Uba. Consultant, Clinical Oncologist, National Hospital, Abuja. You're welcome to Weekend File. We are live in Abuja. I am Jumbi Yusuf. First, let's get the news. We begin with a proactive response by residents of railway terminals in Meduguri, which has averted what was suspected to be an attempt to steal train coaches of the Nigerian Railway Corporation. Major Ma Adamu tells us more about the situation. Here at the Bondo State Police Command, the Commissioner in Charge has confirmed to NTA News that six persons are currently under police custody in connection with that theft attempt, which followed a tip of by Good Samaritan from the, around the area where the incident happened. He further confirmed to us that the arrest rhymes with the executive order signed by the Borno State Governor prohibiting all matters scavenging in Borno State. There was a distress call received from railway quarters. Loader trailers were sighted at railway terminals in Meduguri, evacuating and loading properties belonging to Nigerian Railway Corporation. The properties include three coaches. On the receipt of that information, the divisional police officer ITE mobilized his men to behind railway quarters. And there and then, one Aliyu Menasara was uh, arrested. The said Aliyu Menasara claimed that he is the director, Northeast District, headquartered in Bauchi, that he has been assigned by the MD of Nigerian Railway Corporation to come and evacuate the coaches to Plateau State, where, according to him, from his claim, that the Railway Corporation wanted to hand it over to Plateau State government to initiate intra-railway transport within just metropolis. But the suspect has no identity to certify his claim that is actually the district manager of Northeast District, Bauchi. The police commissioner further confirmed that the principal suspect is currently at large and applauded the proactive response of the residents and pleaded for more vigilance to ease and enhance security in the state. In my Duguri, my Jama Adamu, NTN News. And our correspondent, Mejaba Adomu, is joining us live from Medjugri to give us more insight into the incident of the attempted theft of the royal coaches in Medjugri. Hello, Mejama Adomu. If you can hear me properly, what has changed from the situation report you had this afternoon when you were at the site of the theft, supposed theft of the coaches from the railway station? Uh, essentially, Ruth, nothing has changed from the report we have just aired on air. One thing that needs to be appreciated is the fact that the communities here in Meduguri have high level of security consciousness as demonstrated by their swift alertment of the authorities concerned about this suspicious move they have detected within their environs. On it fast, the police actually move in so fast in order to save the lives of those people suspected to be 
uh, perpetrating the suspicious act because Meduguri Terminus is classified by the police as a security risk area. So the immediate concern was to save the lives of those individuals. But upon interrogation, as we have heard from the Commissioner of Police, the principal suspect who identified himself as an official of the NRC and carrying out the orders of the MD of the NRC escaped and ran away. That heightened the suspicion of the police and that's why they arrested the other six and they are currently interrogating them. They are yet to establish the real facts as the commissioner confirmed to us. And we are not allowed to interview the suspects, they say, until after the investigation. Added to this is the fact that the police commissioner said the police commands across Nigeria are under obligation by the IG to check met any movement of heavy duty infrastructure anywhere across the country. That can only be done by the express permission of the IG. The fact that they have not been alerted about this and there is no any certification or document from those acclaimed officials to carry out those acts, this combined to inform the measures taken by the police as we have heard from the Commissioner of Police. Okay, Major Adam, is there no existing management at the railway station in Meduguri? As at the time we arrived there, we couldn't trace even a single official. In fact, we asked around if there is any official of the NLC around. What we have discovered is to be a kind of somehow deserted environment. So there was no even official on ground to confirm to us the true situation of the instance except what the confirmation we got from the CP. Okay, I'm sure you'll be giving us some updates on, on the situation maybe in a subsequent news bulletin. Thank you so much, Mejima Adamu, for your insight and your contribution. Thank you for having me. Now, in the meantime, the Nigeria Railway Corporation, NRC, this evening said the coaches are officially being moved to NRC running shed, Joss, Plateau State, to be overhauled and put them back to operation. Now, this is in reaction to NTA News report of the incident which you just had, which was confirmed to our reporter by the Commissioner of Police in Borno State. The managing director, NRS, NRC, in a statement explained that the coaches were not to be stolen but officially moved to NRC running shed just prior to state as NRC is trying to extend railway mass transit all over the country. Now to electoral matters, candidates for the November 18, 2023 Bielsa, Imo and Kogi governorship elections have been assured of transparent process as results will be transmitted electronically from the polling units through the INEC result viewing portal. IRF, INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu gave the assurance after monitoring the mock accreditation of voters in some polling units in Kogi state. Mie Ogidi reports. The streets of Lokoja tell the mood of the town. 1.9 million voters to decide the fate of the next governor and the man to midwife that next Kogi 001 is in Kogi state for pre-election assignment. Mahmoud on the move from one polling unit to another, monitoring mock accreditation and the largest polling unit, UPA Standard Secondary School, Ganaja, Kogi State, caught the INEC chairman's attention. This is one of the largest polling units uh, in the country, and that's why we are here. We are taking proactive measures to ensure that we give voters a pleasant experience, voting experience on election day. As we are coming, uh, pictures from Bielsa, and uh, the turnout for the mock accreditation in Bielsa is, is impressive. It will be the same story from uh, Imo State. Flood already threatened the Confluence State and proactive steps taken by IDEC. We took you to Gadumo, um, where if there is flooding before the election, we'll camp the ad hoc staff there and move them at first light on Saturday to this polling unit. Time to assess the readiness of the commission for an election just three weeks away. Preparations near perfect. A tree planted to keep memories of the visit alive. And candidates have no cause to fear. The method is as provided by law. Electronic accreditation, electronic upload of results on the IRF portal. And that is why we are doing this mock. 
So please disregard whatever was reported about what the rep was said to have said in Bielsa. As provided by the Electoral Act and the guidelines for INEC, the INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, says results of the election in Kogi, Bielsa, and Imo will be transmitted electronically through the INEC Results Viewing Portal, IREV. From Lokoja, Mie Ogidi, NTNs. Now let's bring you up to speed with other news. More than half of Nigeria's population are accessing digital platforms using their smartphones with the technology now effectively deployed in democratic governance, political accountability by government, media and civil society organizations. Now this came to the fore in a presentation by the Deputy Speaker of the Senate, Senator Barao Jibrin, during a session on transformation in public lives through public public digital platforms, the Nigerian experience. At the ninth G20 Parliamentary Speakers Summit held in New Delhi, India. ...and civil society organizations towards fully embracing the Global Open Government Partnership Initiative. All of these are helping in transforming Nigeria's governance system to be more accountable and transparent therefore enhancing the management of our resources. The impact of public digital platforms on business and e-commerce in Nigeria is astonishing. Online marketplaces have increased, providing businesses with new avenues for growth. The Deputy Senate President prevailed on the participants of the 9th B20 Summit and G20 Parliamentary Forum to partner with Nigeria to maximize prospects of globalization through effective utilization of ICT for the benefit of all nations. Mobilizing funds to address the climate crisis and poverty has been the focus of the annual meetings of the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, IMF, taking place in Marrakesh, Morocco. Now, good news is that the World Bank has laid out plans to widen its mission with a view to reducing poverty and ensuring stability for all. Neka Oko has more. It's the annual meetings plenary and key stakeholders in development finance have gathered to address the issues affecting global economies. The atmosphere is charged as the world took a moment to listen to the World Bank's new mission for the bank, one that targets to drive impactful development and pave way for quality of life for all. It is a mission that is inclusive of everyone, particularly women and young people, resilient to shocks, including against climate and biodiversity crises, pandemics and fragility, and sustainable through growth and job creation, through human development, through prudent fiscal and debt management, through food security and access to clean air, water and affordable energy. The managing director of the International Monetary Fund, or HIPAT, wants policymakers to put in place policies that will strengthen their economies investment in strong economic foundations in an environment with weak medium-term growth prospects the right policies and reforms are essential the world bank and imf have long been at the forefront of efforts to tackle the world's economic development challenges from marrakech morocco neka oko nta news October 14th annually has been set aside by the Association of National Accountants of Nigeria, ANAN, to give back to the society through its corporate social responsibility. Bosede Ebe reports that this year's exercise by the association is focused on education and reaching out to orphanages. Government Secondary School Kabusa and Halal Children's Home Life Camp are the beneficiaries of the corporate social responsibility by the Association of National Accountants of Nigeria, ANAN. This is the second edition of the annual celebration by the association. <laughs> Mathematical sets, textbooks, exercise books and other learning materials were provided to aid the student with learning process, while food items were donated to the children in the orphanage. As you have seen a reason to make Nigeria better, we promise in our numbers that we will do more than what you've just done and we'll make Nigeria better. I'm part of 
everything that has happened here today and I feel blessed by Anna. I thank this school as a privilege to, to have this item. An entity like this uh, they saw us and saw us worthy of receiving their, their gestures and we sincerely are very happy and we're grateful. With this year's theme tagged Anan for Better Society, the association says it is another opportunity to give back to the society for economic prosperity. Like you heard from the school, the students are very proud of the day. They said they are looking forward to when they will grow up and also do something as the way we did it today. So I think it's, uh, it has become a model for the children. In the subsequent edition, we look at other areas that are vulnerable that we can assist. Uh, it's a continuous exercise. Anan says it is part of ways of contributing its own quarter to national development while pledging continuous commitment in securing the future of young Nigerians. In Abuja, Bosse de Ebo, NT News. Meanwhile, members of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, ICANN, have been urged to sustain the integrity of the Institute. This was at the Institute's 53rd Annual Accountants Conference work, Working Dinner held in Abuja, which was tagged Nigeria, Imperatives for Inclusive Development. We advocate for better accountability and transparency in governance. And while the ICANN Accountability Index that we invested so much and we continue to invest much in to uh, ensure that our voice continue to be heard in the area of um, accountability and transparency in governance. The meeting was an interactive session between members in government and ICON Council. Now, talking security, Nigeria joins her counterpart at the 2023 International Association of Chiefs of Police Annual Conference in San Diego, California, USA, to review challenges and opportunities facing law enforcement agencies in contemporary, rapidly evolving global landscape. Minister of State Police Affairs Iman Suleiman Ibrahim, who spoke at the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executive Board meeting on the sidelines of the International Police Chiefs Conference, gave an insight, experiences and leadership within the Ministry of Police Affairs of Nigeria in contributing to the conversation at the Executive Board meeting which had prominent law enforcement executives. Well, here are some summaries of our goals. Number one, to reshape the Nigerian police force into a modern, responsive, intelligence led, technology driven, efficient law enforcement institution. To redefine police in Nigeria as a paragon of excellence, built on a solid foundation of professionalism, integrity, accountability, and effective. More than 16,000 public safety professionals gathered to learn new techniques, advance their knowledge and careers, and equip their department, department for success at the ongoing conference. Security agencies need to explore intelligence research as a means of dealing with internal security threats confronting the nation. The Minister of Interior, Olubumi Tunji Ojo, made this remark during the official launch of 12 books authored by Commandant General of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, Dr. Ahmed Abubakar Audi, and co-authored by the President International Academy for Gender and Peace. Dennis Temple tells us more. Threats. So security is a global challenge. Nigeria is not an exemption. This threat, many believe, is based on ideological warfare rather than physical war. Hence, the need to profile other means of tackling it. The Interior Minister Olubo Metinjojo says he is optimistic that with the renewed hope agenda of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, there will be light at the end of the tunnel. You cannot guard against what you don't know. And that is why we say we talk about trends, we talk about occurrences. An ability to forecast prospective incidences will determine the level of your security. I have a passion 
for writing and reading. I work with Agwanda as busy as a commandant. He said, have the time to write 12 books. That is quite a mean achievement. And uh, this set of two books, you know, are not just books, but books that are so enlightening and insightful. The 12 books are written to promote national security in the country, especially from the perspective of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, in Abuja, Dennis Temple, and the News. We'll take a break now. When we return, we can file. We'll be digging into the burden of breast cancer and the way forward. Don't go away. You're welcome back. Before we go into the discussion proper, let's take some reports to push the conversation. Breast cancer has over time and now more than ever attracted global attention due to its prevalence among women of reproductive and premenopausal ages. In this report, Uchi Oguchuku beams a such light on the prevailing incidents in Nigeria, efforts of individuals, government and other key players to save lives. When I had my diagnosis, it was traumatic for me. I just had, I have a little baby who was like 18 months old then. So someone like me, I did not expect that it would come to me. So most people, when they hear breast cancer, they say it cannot be, it's not my portion. No, not me. And then they don't take it um, seriously at first. Devastated but determined, Fevo Etuke embarked on a journey for life, or simply put, the struggle for survival. I was everywhere begging for money, anybody that can help, because my, my, the, the cost of my treatment, so one oncologist told me that I chose the most expensive cancer to treat. Because I decided I wanted to go to hospital, I wasn't having much support like that from people who were supporting me to do alternative therapy. Because and this, uh, that's where we're also having problems. People are bringing solutions that are not the solution. Cancer is not a result of a one entity. So, uh, we have what we call immunology chemistry, whereby we, there's a molecular classification of breast cancer into different subtypes. And thus, molecular classification of breast cancer into different subtypes help the doctors to know appropriate drug to use and appropriate intervention to undertake. So without that classification, sometimes you use a wrong drug for wrong medication. Findings show an upset in breast cancer globally and accounts for 23% of cancer deaths in Nigeria. This is attributed to the shift to an unhealthy lifestyle that leads to obesity, hypertension and the use of hormonal inducement therapy. Late presentation, diagnosis and treatment are reported as the main causes of breast cancer deaths in the country. Uh, well, the government is trying uh, doing uh, its uh, her best in terms of um, uh, cancer awareness campaign and also uh, putting some measures in terms of helping some indigent patients, what we call cancer health fund, which is on the, on the, in the, um, uh, is ongoing, and the aim is to uh, fund some uh, wallets of some patients so that they were able to access some drugs which have been issued they cannot uh, afford because of cost. Government is out to improve cancer treatment facilities and costs. Uh, the institute has a uh, um, set of a strategic plan, five-year strategic plan, which we intend to launch uh, like uh, in, in, uh, on the 23rd of October. This cancer, uh, national uh, strategic cancer plan is, is, is a policy document for the country on how the country is going to uh, face cancer head on. And the importance or the essence of this guideline is to uh, prevent uh, cancer morbidity and mortality and to reduce drastically the uh, prevalence of cancer and the suffering of the masses of this country. A lifestyle coach and writer Fever shines a thought of hope that breast cancer can be conquered. We are begging the government more of awareness, even individuals to be sensitive when it comes to cancer and, and um, early detection. You will not spend so much as far when it's now so um, advanced. Uchi Ugochuku, NTA News. And I have my guest in the studio. She is Dr. Fatima Ino Uba, consultant clinical oncologist, National Hospital Abuja. You're welcome to Weekend File. 
Thank you for having me. Now, for a start, all most of the lumps on breast and lymph nodes are signs of breast cancer. Briefly, take us through the stages of detection here. Okay, so um, let me start by defining what a breast cancer is. Cancer is a malig is abnormal growth of cancer cell. When the, the normally the the, the the breast has its own normal cells. However, when it grew abnormal, it become cancer. It's not all lumps in the breast that is cancer. Lump could be cancerous or not cancerous. That is where you have malignant and non malignant. Some lump are not cancerous. It's not all lump in the breast that is cancerous. Some are benign and some are malignant. Most people say it's the fear, you know, when you're diagnosed with cancer, it's the fear that the, the first manifests in you. Now, who are at risk of breast cancer and why is, why is it manifesting in younger people under 50? And how much is the genetic predisposition increasing susceptibility to breast cancer? So, breast cancer has risk factors. Family history previous history of cancer, any part of the body, nulliparous, early menarche, late menopause, and then patient that has family history of breast cancer or individual that has family history of breast cancer, it's very important for them to do self-breast examination from time to time, depending on the age of the individual. If, the, if someone that has a family history of breast cancer, if less than 40 years, self-breast examination is very important, then breast ultrasound from time to time. And then individual that have a, a, a possible family history of breast cancer from the age of 40 years and above, it would be nice for them to do a mammo once every six months or once every year, depending on the finding of what they are seeing in the breast. So early detection is very important. And how can you detect it early? You can only detect it early if you are, if you are doing a routine examination of your breast. And also from time to time, you are doing, depending on your age, you are doing a breast ultrasound or a breast mammogram. Because early detection saves life. Most of the patients we see those days come in advanced state, perhaps because of lack of awareness, perhaps maybe because of poverty. Now, in place are efforts, you know, to check the spread. Now, how much is the World Health Organization Global Breast Cancer Initiative, among others, targeting reduction of mortality rate in Nigeria? I'm listening to you, ma. Okay, so um, for targeting reduction rates will be based on awareness. Like I said earlier, awareness is the key. Because when you're aware that cancer of the breast is real and it runs in a family, and even those that don't have family history of breast cancer, it can happen. So by so doing, you should very important examine your breast from time to time. And also, what is the level of awareness out there telling women to have checks? What, how do they check? What do they do? These are questions begging for answers. And what is the time for them to reach out to the hospitals to get a diagnosis? Well, the level of awareness is still low um, because um, a lot of people are on denial. They don't believe that there is something that exists called cancer. But we are, as doctors, oncology and other cancer advocates, they are trying their best creating awareness. However, when an individual notices a lump in her breast, please go to the hospital for a medical checkup. Either you see an, a doctor, we will send you for investigation, they will do an ultrasound for you, depending on the age, in less than 40 years we'll do an ultrasound, and more than 40 years we'll do a mammogram. So that if, for example, you do a mammogram and then it shows some features of malignancy, you should go for a breast biopsy. So by the time you do a breast biopsy, depending on the size of the mass, and then the histology turn out to be malignant, please don't be afraid. Go and start your treatment. Early detection saves lives. 
And, and we heard in the report that the cost of this monogram you're talking about, CT scan with, with, you know, and all that is quite expensive. Is it because of the fear of the money patients have to pay that makes them not to go to the hospital in the first place to seek for help? Uh, it's two ways. One is the fear of the diagnosis. They don't know what they are going to meet by the time they go for the screener. Secondly is the money because um, the screening is quite expensive. It's quite expensive and it's, it's not everybody that can afford it. Mammogram I think is about between 5,000 to 10,000 if I can remember and then the breast ultrasound is about maybe 3,000 to 7,000. So th the money is very important aspect of it. The finance is very as important aspect. If the government can subsidize the, the price of the ultrasound and also the mammal so that a lot of women can be screened and then it can be detected early and they, it will save a lot of lives. Either I'm talking from the point of a cancer survivor myself. Ten years surviving cancer has not been easy because when you think of the cost, where you need to go and get treatment, and I need to ask you a very fundamental question before we go on this break. Where is the place of alternative medicine in the treatment of cancer? Alternative medicine, a lot of patients that go for alternative medicine, they don't do well with it. They don't do well. So I think... I'm lot, listening to you. Yes. Go on. A lot of people that go for alternative medicine, they don't do well with it. So they don't I, do well. They don't do well with it. So I don't encourage patients to go for alternative medicine. Okay. Doctor, we'll take a break. When we return, we'll talk about other issues. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Now welcome back and we're still discussing reducing the burden of breast cancer in Nigeria and my guest Dr. Fatima Inouba, consultant cl clinical oncologist national hospital Abuja is still in the studio. Now let's talk about the disease burden especially late detection like for stage three and above. What does somebody do because you've sort of gone a little bit far into the disease itself. What will a victim or a patient be able to do to maybe reverse it or reduce the, 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 the effect of it on the body? Okay, so patients that present um, at stage three, that is a locally advanced disease. So what we do for this kind of patient is that at the clinic, we examine the patient, we ask them to do investigation, like full blocker, EIU, LFT, chest X-ray, you know, for proper staging of the patient. Thereafter, we commence the patient of chemo. While well, the kind of chemo we give is new adjuvant chemotherapy. New adjuvant chemotherapy means that you give the chemo to shrink the tumor. You give the chemo to shrink the tumor. You give the chemo to shrink the tumor. So by the time you give like three or four cycles of chemotherapy, the, the, the mass must have reduced to some extent. And then you now send the patient to, su to surgery for surgery. However, we treat our patient based on the immunohistochemistry because breast cancer these days, there are different molecular subtypes. We have lumina A, lumina B, triple negative, and HER2 type. So the chemo the patient takes depends on the molecular subtype. And the chemo the patient takes depend on the molecular subtype. And also, the prices of the chemo depend on the type of the molecular subtype. Some patients take chemo that is as much as 1 point something million. 1.2, 1.5 million every three weeks. And but some patients take chemo of like 50, 60, 70,000 every three weeks. So the type of chemo the patient takes depend on their molecular subtype. After taking like three to four chemo, we send the patient to surgeon for surgery. However, some patients see desire to leave their breast. So there is room for breast conservative surgery. In this case, the patient will not take off the surgeon will not remove the whole of the breast, but remove part of the breast. The, where the region where the tumor is, the surgeon will remove it. But some patients will say, oh, doctor, please, I don't need the breast again, just remove it. In this kind of patient, we go ahead and do mastectomy for the patient. However, after the mastectomy or breast conservative surgery, the same patients that had had three to four courses of chemo, we add additional chemo for them and then send them for the therapy. And thereafter, patients come for follow-up. Patients that are HER2 positive, that is, the chemo is for 18 months 
which the chemo is for one year, which is 18 cycle. Okay. And the patients that are had uh, ERPR positive, they are on tablet after radiotherapy for five to ten years, which is preventive. So when you have HER negative, what does it mean? Um, that is an estrogen receptor negative or progesterone receptor negative. Those ones, they will not benefit from the hormonal drugs. The mm -hmm. patient that benefit from hormonal drugs is the one that hormone receptor positive. They will benefit from the drug for five to ten years and also it prevents recurrence of the disease. Now many people think cancer is a feminine thing but it equally affects men. Can you shed more light on that? Cancer, breast cancer affects 0.5 to 1 percent of male patients. It also affects male. And uh, most patients we, we see at the clinic, though very few male present with breast cancer at the clinic, and then um, they do well with it. They do well with it because by the time they are detected, they have breast, uh, breast cancer. What we do for them, we give new adjuvant chemotherapy, just like the way we treat the female, uh, female patients. patients. We give new adjuvant chemotherapy. We set them for mastectomy to remove the, the, the breast, and then thereafter we do the therapy for them, and they do well. And what we from the study it showed that a lot of patients that are male breast cancer are hormone sensitive so we put them on also hormone tablet mm. for five to ten years now according to the national cancer control plan 2018 to 2022 cancer is responsible for 76,000 deaths every year and do we have enough professionals facilities for detection and so on so on do we have enough professionals facility, and facilities for detection and management in Nigeria? Well, we, I would say we don't have enough facility for detection. We don't have enough facility for detection. When you come, when you, we, with our large population of 200 and something million, we don't have enough facility. And the truth is that we don't have enough um, specialists. Because in Abuja, we are at we are about eight consultants clinical oncology and with the population of patients we are seeing at the clinic sometimes you start running your clinic by nine o'clock before you are done around four or five o'clock we are seeing a large chunk of patients because of awareness and most of the patients we are seeing this day are advanced stage disease the, uh, the, the testing for the HER, I remember when I was in Medjugorje, I have to come all the way to Abuja to have that test taken. And at the end of the day, they said, my, my, my sample has been contaminated. What is the level of you know, synergy with teaching hospitals in the states to ensure that this kind of test can be taken at the local government level, at the state level, instead of coming to the federal level to have these tests? Is it available for people at the grassroots? Most of the people at the grass, most of it's not available at the people at the grassroots. It's not available because there are few centers that does the IHC. And breast cancer can only be treated when a patient has done an IHC because the immunohistochemistry will give you a guide on what type of treatment you will give to a patient. That is why most of our most of, most of referral we are receiving here. Most of them, they will give them chemo without IHC. And you find out that the patient is taking chemo, she's not doing well because the target has not been hit. So most of the patients from the, most of the patients coming from the grassroots, they are not doing the IHC. But some of our doctors at the grassroots, they are kind enough to send the sample or the tissue to centers that it can be done. Okay, October is Breast Cancer Month. Is there any arrangement to celebrate it, to talk about it, to raise awareness, to go deep into the areas, hard to reach areas to educate people about it briefly before I let you go? Yes, so we, are, we, we have started from the beginning of this month. We have, we have been talking about awareness. Like myself, I've gone to so many secondary schools. I've gone to so many hospitals. I've gone to the markets talking about awareness. I've gone to so many places to meet my team because I'm also, I also have my NGO that I run. So I've gone to so many places to talk about cancer awareness, creating awareness. But the question I keep getting from people is that you are talking about awareness. Go and screen. Examine your breast. How do we get screened? This is a woman that has not seen maybe 
50,000 lonesome in her whole life. You see, go and screen, she screen, mammogram or breast otters and say you have a breast lump. How do you start? Where do you go from there? Investigation will cost you not than 300 to 400,000 era. A woman that has not seen 100,000 era her whole life, how will she get those investigations done? And when she manage to do the investigation, how will she get treated? So truly and truly those days we are, apart from creating awareness, we are sourcing for fund also because the funds is very important. Patient will have breast cancer one and two is how they get treated. Mm. So the, and the treatment is very expensive. Well, I believe stakeholders and relevant agencies watching this program will be able to understand and you know intervene where they can. Dr. Fatima Ino Uba, consultant clinical oncologist, National Hospital Abuja. Thank you so much for coming on Weekend Five. It's been a pleasure having your insight into breast cancer in Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you. Weekend Five will be back in a moment. Don't go away. You're welcome back. Substandard products and other unwholesome manufacturing practice remain a major setback to Nigeria's quest to align with global best practice to change the narrative. A work was held in Lagos to champion advocacy for compliance with standard. Joel Popola reports. When standards are compromised, the end product is usually loss of property and life. The work for standards along several roads in Lagos metropolis was therefore to demonstrate SON's determination to sanitize and enlighten Nigerians on the danger inherent in using products not certified by SON. We are together, we are united to fight of standard products and we are carrying our stakeholders along so that they will understand the, the, the advantage of standard and that when the standards are implemented, it is for the benefit of all of us. We all agree that the world is merging towards having common activities and products okay that's why they're sharing a vision to make sure that the same standard uh, subsists wherever you are in the world standards organization of nigeria says it is vigorously pursuing its dream of gaining more mileage in keeping pace with the international community in line with the theme of the world standards day which is a shared vision for a better world chief certification you need tests Every product after inspection, they are sampled, sent to the lab, and the lab carried out the test based on the established standard. And then there is a verdict whether the product has conformed or not. And this is very critical in decision making when it comes to certification. When they embrace standards, they will be able to export their product. So the aim of this whole work for standard is to tell Nigerians that they embrace standards. The initiative replicated across the world is expected to have a unified standard to ensure all products are safe for consumers' use. In Lagos, Joel Okbola, NC News. More reactions to Super Eagles 2-2 to, to draw with Falcon Eagles of Saudi Arabia as Bendel Insurance go top of the Nigeria Premier Football League. For more on these and more stories, let's join Badi Adile on Sports Update. Reactions have continued to throw Nigeria's 2 or draw with Saudi Arabia in an international friendly match played in Portugal. Sports analysts say the match exposed some lapses in the team which the Super Eagles should strive to correct in their next game. The best of performance from the Super Eagles is really when you look at the performance of the goalkeepers. But there are so many things to learn from it, a whole lot of things to take away from that match. And so many positive. I think it's really, it will really help us in preparation for the African Cup of Nations. We had some uh, defensive errors and which made us concealed and we settled on a draw which I believe with time the boys will improve more before the African Cup of Nations come. And the Super Eagles, if I will rate the strikers to the midfielders, I will rate them on a high note. They created chances, but they were not converting. Meanwhile, Super Eagles forward Victor Osime remains a big doubt for the clash against Mozambique on Monday. The Napoli striker was substituted in the second half of Friday's game against the Green Falcons due to injury concerns. To the Nigeria Premier Football League, where Bendel Assurance maintained top position after beating Plateau United 1-0 at the Samuel Obemudia Stadium, Benin City, on Saturday. 
Lobby Stars of Makudi held Casina United to a goalless draw at the Muhammadu Diko Stadium Casina to go second with five points, while Sunshine Stars of Akure played a one or draw with Heartland. And finally to tennis, Andrei Roblev beat Grigor Dimitrov in straight sets to reach the final of the Shanghai Masters, where he will face Hubert Hookers. The world number seven saved a set point before taking the 76 minutes first set and came back from a breakdown in the second to claim a 7-6-6-3 win. With sports update, Badi Adeleye, Inter News. Let's... Let's take a quick check on the weather prospect for Nigeria and other countries of the world. Welcome. Dust haze is still the prevailing weather across the northern cities, with reduced horizontal visibilities expected by Sunday, ranging from 2,000 to 5,000 meters, with few cities expected to record 1,000 meters or less. Conversely, rain-bearing clouds are expected to give morning thunderstorms to parts of Taraba, Adamawa, the Federal Capital Territory, some parts of Nasarawa, Benue, extending to Akwaibom and Cross River states of the country. Later in the day, with more cloud build-up, there are better chances of thunderstorms to most parts of the southern region, the central cities, including parts of Adamawa, Taraba, and southern Kaduna. And that's the forecast. I remain Joyce Ogunle. I'll see you again. And that's Weekend File for this week. Thanks so much for your time. I am Jumai Yusuf. Good night. <laughs>